I dream of it. I work for it. Therefore, I have it. I fill the gap. I spread my wings and fly. Given the chance, I am more than you could ever imagine. My name is Martha Chumo, though these days I go by Njeri Chelimo. I'm currently a full-time student at Minerva Schools at KGI. I first um, came across Akili Dada nine years ago. I'm one of the old kids. Because we couldn't afford um, to go to Kenya High, my mom could not afford to pay for it. She saw an ad in the library about kids who had gotten above 430. I had, so she told me to apply, and that's where the journey started. Akili Dada sets out to transform lives of girls and young women from underprivileged backgrounds who are passionate about change. Our main aim is really to um, change the status quo of women and girls and really beginning that from an individual point of view. Then moving on to transforming communities because we realize that communities are people, people are communities. And when we transform how a girl thinks about herself now, it transforms how she thinks about herself in the future. Kilidata started by giving the first four scholarships and that the money for those first four actually came from wedding gifts that my husband and I got from our wedding. What inspired Akili Dada was a combination of things that were going on in my personal life, opportunities that I had had, combining this, this question of individual agents of change and then the need to transform systems and structures and, and the need to invest in a generation of tremendous talent that women represent, having access to scholarships, benefiting from mentoring, benefiting from leadership training, all of those things came together to form a Kividada. The situation before I met Akividada was really bad. I reported to school after all four months had reported and there was no school fee, there was only shopping which was only done half of it. Then back in the family I left home knowing that none of my siblings could sit on one table and share a meal or discuss anything. It was terrible and I had to go through a lot of mentoring and I really need, needed someone to walk me through the journey. I met Akildeda for the first time in the Kenya High School when I went for the Akildeda interview that was held in second term from two. Before that, I had tried 13 institutions looking for scholarship without success. So I thought maybe God had forgotten me for sure. But then Veronica then came back later and told us that the rest of us who are remaining were actually the people who had qualified for that interview. I'm very happy for Akildeda to consider me as a scholar. First of all, they pay my school fees. At least that reduces my level of worries, basically. And also we have shopping. And at least when you go to school, you're guaranteed that you'll have everything for the term. So my experience with Akildeda has had so many different phases because the program is not just a high school scholarship. Then it evolved by the time that I was in Form 3 to, you know, leadership trainings. So we had all these leadership academies. Um, I was getting out more, though investing more in my skills as a leader. The first program I got into was a Young Change Makers program. Basically, you're taught how to be different. Amazing women take you in and they help you see yourself in a different light. As a woman who can change your community, your family, Africa, the world. And it gives you a sense of belonging, a sense of vision as to what you should be as a young woman. The Young Change Makers program initially started as a scholarship given uh, program from works with girls between the age of 13 and 19 years, mostly high school students and post high school students. But then we realized that with the girls we were working with, they needed more than just us paying tuition fees. And that's how we integrated bits of psychosocial support 
at the same time equip them with skills that we feel will make them thrive while they're in high school and beyond high school. So at first I was really confused, like in high school people don't do community service. Then it evolved by the time that I was in Form 3. I said to learn community service is not, you know, going to hospitals, not just that, it's actually having impact in your community. So the the second phase was really thinking about impact, thinking about the community that I live in and the role that I play. After a couple of holidays, probably three, you had to come up with your own project. It had to be unique and it had to be something innovative. I learned how to make mat, tapestry mats. And I was like, this is really cool. The materials are cheap. I can use my money and part of the money that actually Dada was giving me for the project. And um, I'd gotten all these skills from doing home science in school. Basically, I went back to my hometown, got a couple of girls from the community center and the church, pulled them in around six girls, dedicated my time, bought the materials, and actually taught the young girls how to create a self-sustaining um, project that would give them income but at the same time my grandma would sit down with them and I and teach them why it was necessary for them to hold on the early marriage and actually get an education in school. At the end of it all I actually won an award for the best community service project in 2013. So the girls uh, sit down and design a sustainable project and work together with the community to make sure that they're providing a needed viable solution for their community. We have the gap year program who've graduated from the Young Change Makers program. And when they are in their gap year waiting to join university, we know that it's a very dangerous time for girls. A lot of things can go wrong. And we realized that we needed to sort of secure our investment and ensure that they go into university and continue on the trajectory of leadership that they've already set out. So we have this gap year program that offers skills building, community service, uh, college prep and uh, career preparedness. As soon as I finished high school, I was an intern at the Little Hazina Towers office. I think I was lucky being one of the few interns to work in such a small intimate office and play such a key role at Akilidada at that point. So I saved up some of the money. Uh, then after that, while I was an intern, I got really interested in how computers work. It was the first time I had a computer to myself which was really exciting. I came across this whole world of programming, which was very different from the path that I had taken. I did like all the coding courses I could get online. And from being an intern, I transitioned straight to working um, as a web developer. This is really focused on ensuring that our girls, when they get into university, they are ready. They are prepared to deal with the challenges that come with being in a new environment. I can't say enough about um, Akili Danda because I went there this girl who had a vision but didn't know what to do about it. Because when I was starting Ability Society of Kenya, back in campus, my idea was to produce a magazine. Um, I trained writing proposals. People would say it's a good idea, but that was it. I, I didn't get someone to say, I'll hold your hand, I'll teach you how to do it, I'll help you implement it. I contacted Joyce, who is the Director for Innovative and Leadership. I came to learn there is a program, the fellowship program that they have. So when I applied, I was considered to be one of the fellows for 2015. The Innovation and Leadership program um, initially started three years ago. When we started, we were just one project in the program, uh, which was a fellowship program. But now we work with young women from 19 to 35. We invest in young women who have projects in their communities and the projects are diverse. So what we do as Akili Dada is we invest in these young women uh, by giving them a um, modest seed grant and then we also give them trainings to allow them to do whatever it is that they're doing. We got the Kividada Seed Grant and came up with an online version of the website that has content. Right now Ugandan content from pre-primary to university and it's free, free of charge. Anyone from any part of the country can access it, which is installed on your computer. Better still, we came up with the Yaka tablet. The tablet comes pre-installed with the app, meaning you can use it for its multi-purpose. You, you don't use it for your car alone. Someone might not be able to afford this, but they can afford this. So they don't need internet, they just need the tab. So with the seed funding for Akili Dada, it was able to totally transform how we did things. We were able to get the equipment we needed. I learned how to do things properly, like how to do proposal writing, how to do strategy, 
how to keep proper records. So that helped us to put our organization in a place where we are able even to attract funding. Since then, we've been able to reach over 80 children with free health services and education. We also go out in the different communities in what we call uh, the Dada Dialogue. And this is a space for young women uh, to just talk about the issues that they face in their societies. I would want to say that the passion that we put into our work is translated into the impact of our work. Right now, as we speak, we are in four countries in East Africa, and we are keeping up with our dream of really going to every country in Africa to ensure that there is a presence of a Kilidada in each country. And we take the same message of girls and young women have the solutions to the challenges that face the communities within Africa, and they have the solutions to those challenges. So if given a chance, they can design fantastic programs, they can bring about a change that is not mostly attributed to women. <laughs> Hiya, question. What makes you tick? Um, <laughs> um, life makes me tick. What makes me tick? is um, positivity and a positive environment. And I think Akilidada provides this environment that um, there's a lot of inspiration going on. There's a lot of um, positive talk. And um, the environment is just great and perfect to work in. One of the things I think we did a really good job of is building an organizational culture that I think works. An organizational culture around sisterhood around mutual respect, support for each other. And one of the things I consider my biggest success is while well, at Akili Dada. <laughs> <laughs> my highest moment was the day I was appointed into the board. In 2013, who would have thought that at 23 years old I will be in the board of, uh, you know, big organizations such as this. For me, Akili Dada was an eye-opener to a life full of possibilities and just the endless dreams. <laughs> At 22, most of the leadership skills um, that I have, I'd say I got directly from Akili Dada. They gave me the understanding that I'm a wholesome person. This leadership training has made us grow into self-motivated people, very disciplined people, so we don't need that extra push in life, uh, but you're actually able to push yourself. From leadership, I was the CEO of a team at 19 to social change. I was looking at how technology can help develop Africa and the role that it's played developing other cities and other countries. When I went to a Kledada Fellowship, my organization was still in the idea phase. So in a way, I can say Girls to Africa was a baby of Akilidada. Our girls have grown past school, past university leadership, and they are now around 550 girl leaders, or whom we have incubated. I would describe Akilidada as a foundation that puts women first and believes women can make change. Ability Africa magazine would not be there if I was not a fellow at Akilidada 2015. And through the Ability Magazine, we are able to reach out to many people. I also want to be known as a change maker, a dreamer who's a doer. And I believe that if you have the power to make someone's dreams come true and help them believe in themselves, take up the step. Like, Akli Dada has done amazing for the girls who've been in the program. And just give back to the community. These are not girls we're rescuing. These are girls and young women who have power, who have vision, who have direction, and who, who know what, what is good for the world and we ought to let them. I'm so excited to, to, to see what happens next. I'm so proud of the young women who continue to run the organization with such dedication and power. I'm just proud. I have many dreams for my life. First of all, I want to get my PhD by, by the time I'm 30. And I want to do mechatronics engineering. Uh, that's a combination of mechanical and electrical engineering. I want to be a neurosurgeon or an electrical engineer. I know it's only by attaining this that I, just like a Kildada who held my hand, I can hold another girl's hand and see her through her education. In the future, I see Akili Dada being an institution that's 
well recognized as a convener for girls and young women and actually advising the government on the various uh, strategies to use to continue empowering and transforming the lives of girls and young women. All the life she has seen, all the mean inside of me, they took away the prophet's dream for the prophet on the street. Now she's stronger than you know, still her starts to grow. All his life he's been told, he'll be nothing when he's old. All the kicks and all the blows, he will never let it show. Cause he's stronger than you know, how the steel starts to grow. When you've been fighting for it all your life, you've been struggling to make things right. It's our superhero learns to fly. When you've been fighting for it all your life, you've been working every day and night. It's our superhero learns to fly. Every day, every hour, turn the pain into power. 